you guys. So um, we've survived another snowmageddon in Texas. It was the worst blizzard that we've had all year. We had almost a half inch, maybe three eighths of an inch of snow that then froze and then melted and then froze and then melted as it went away and the world stopped. Nobody's done anything because last year the power grid shut down and so everybody was afraid. But then you know what happened? Nothing. All right, <clears throat> so here's what's happened here since we've been gone. Also nothing. <laughs> we've been doing a whole lot of nothing. Um, a couple things I want to tell you. Number A is that you don't have to tell a giraffe to hold its head high. Think about that. And secondly, God has a lot of children, but he doesn't have any grandchildren. Now let's think about that for a minute. What does that mean? That means that you don't get to go to heaven on your parents' salvation or on somebody else's salvation. You don't get to say, I know this person and they're very spiritual or very godly or very Christian, therefore I am going with them by proxy. I'm gonna grab their coattails and ride on in. No golden tickets. Incorrect, right? So what is gonna actually happen is you're gonna stand before God and he's gonna be like, what did you do? What is your decision? And you're like this. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I know that person and they're a pretty good dude. And he's like, that's nice. What did you do? Right. So think about that. Think about it real hard. Then go find a quiet place. Then repent and get right with God. It's like our tapers are here. That makes me very happy. Oh, hey there. So our taper showed up. And I want to show you guys how this process works because I think it's amazing. Come on. So they've already taken better once, right? But now they're gonna sand off the rough edges, which sometimes in life we need somebody to sand off our rough edges. And God usually sends people that are like not our favorite people to sand off our rough edges. So let's just see. First you gotta get the ladder out of the way. That's very important. And then, wait for it. You got the sand pole. The sand paper on that. And the sanding block. That's it. That's how it works. Moving on. Okay. See up here? So you see how there's like a six inch wide thing? Well now look at that. Boom. Perfectly done. Isn't that amazing? And then you get all these tape lines done. And it's done perfectly. You gotta look. Alright, come on. Then here. He's got a corner tool. Now watch this. He's got a tool pop right there. Pop this thing in there. Fills it up with mud. Get it out of his way. Oh, not there. Watch this magic. Done. Done. It could be slow. That, then you can be fast. Be fast, drywall. Billy Feast for Sharon <laughs> <laughs> All right, now look over here. He's got, look at that, boom. How did you get so tall? You got really long shins. Oh, those are sticks, that's embarrassing. <laughs> so he comes in with a mud knife and does some hand stuff. That's amazing. These guys are great. I need to get out of the way, because they're like, hey, bring up your stupid. And they're not wrong. <laughs> they're not wrong, I am stupid. Look at sanding away, taping away. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. All right, what you want to talk about, Jimmy? Well, not sloth. <laughs> yeah, sloth is definitely not going on here. Sometimes it takes a minute to get what you want, but then all of a sudden, boom! It's life there. changes, just like yes. that. And that does happen in real life a lot. You're sitting there like, I feel like I'm bogged down by something. I feel like I'm bogged down by something. It takes forever. You're like, whatever, get out of this mess. And then what happens? All of a sudden, like, the clouds part and the sun starts to shine and there's the answer and God just answered your prayers. And today my prayers are answered because progress is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Huh. Hello. So today is a very exciting day because we're going to blow texture. But before we blow texture, we have to prime the walls. And how do you do that? You take the paint sprayer, you put the paint in it, you bring the gun inside and you start priming the walls. Why would you do that? It, it helps with the work. 
It helps with the uniform of the texture mm -hmm. and it helps with moisture. Cool. All right. So I think I learned something because I don't know very much. But did you know that most people are living in cages with the doors wide open? Are you aware of that? No, I'm not. Yeah. No, I mean, most people are prisoners to things that you're like, you know, you can leave at any time. Like literally, you just walk out the door. Yeah. And like, no, I can't. I mean, you don't understand. My, my life, blah, blah, blah. So as an experiment, as a social experiment, some people made a prison that looked like a real prison. And they put these prisoners in there. And the prisoners went, and this is maximum security prison. Mm -hmm. They went in there. They lived for long periods of time and never even tried to escape. But the walls were made out of paper mache, no lie. They made cinder block looking walls out of paper mache. Really? And the people just never bothered to go, hey man, this is hollow, hold on a second. And then just like, well, I could just get right out of here. They never even tried. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah, so maybe if you feel like you're a slave to something, it's time just to like knock on that wall a little bit and see if you can find a break in there and then be free. Bro. So a lot of you guys are like, this weather's been horrible. It's so cold. But don't worry, because look. Spring is right around the corner. All right, so they're doing text for the day, which is pretty exciting. I love it. As you can tell by our scaffolding, sheet rocks up. Obviously, insulation's done, spray foam. We've tape embedded, we've textured, and what's next? Paint. <laughs> I got my COVID mask, yes, got my do. COVID head sock, <laughs> nose is clean. Let's see what it looks like in 28 minutes. Probably not so pretty. Um, so, we got the scaffolding up because obviously this is 20 feet tall and my legs are not that long anymore yet. Yes. <laughs> no. All right. So, I want to tell you guys about learning your lesson the easy way or learning your lesson the hard way, difficult way. What do you choose, Jimmy? Easy or hard? I'd like to choose the easy. I choose the hard way every single time. How so come? Any, any lesson that I've learned that you're like, John, you seem to know something about this. Be just 100% assured. Like if you're like, I should Google this. Da, 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 da. Sure enough, John learned that the hard way <laughs> because I am dumb as a rock. So let's rewind back through the annals of time and get to the time back you know now you know me as like john's a good-hearted dude he cares about people he goes out and helps people and i like him rewind way back farther 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 <laughs> okay good <clears throat> at the time i was 14 15 years old something like that i was a drug addict i was a drug dealer i got arrested for being a runaway they put me on rehab okay now <clears throat> let me tell you how this experience went they arrest me. I'd been arrested before. Um, they take me to the cop shop. They call my mom. I'm like, I'm going to go home. That's what's going to happen. They get done doing paperwork and whatever. Then they re-handcuff me. I'm like, this That's is different. Not normal. <laughs> <clears throat> they got my brother. He was there too. They handcuffed him. They put him in a different cop car. I'm like, hmm, I'm not liking this. So they take us both to rehab separately. Mm. They bring me in, do the admittance or whatever. Cops bring me all the way through all the, you know, locked door, locked door, magnet door, whatever. You got a retinal scan, whatever. <clears throat> I finally make it in there. They put me in some tiny little room. There's a bed and that's it. Somebody walks in and says, take off your shoes. And I'm like, no. Here's where the dumb part comes in, okay? <laughs> okay. This is the hard lesson. No, and I used some words that had four letters. They weren't nice ones. <laughs> It wasn't like love and kind or whatever it was. Sick. They started with an F, a lot of them did. Um, fork. Yeah, fork, <laughs> foul, flip, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, I tell them what they can do with themselves. Um, <clears throat> so then they're like, okay. And they shut the door and they lock it. I'm like, ha ha, I win. 
coat to end of whatever room. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Next thing you know, chunk, 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 here come the Marines. And I don't know if they're actually Marines, but there are six dudes that had arms the size of my legs. They come in there like, get on the bed, take off your shoes. I'm like, no, nah, man, I've seen this movie. Absolutely not. <laughs> so I start screaming, cussing, yelling, whatever. Was I on drugs at the time? I'm not going to lie. Yes, I was. So they're like, we're going to physically put you on the bed and restrain you. I'm like, no, you're not. So they start trying to get me, and I start getting around the room, whatever. I grab on the doorknob. They pull my legs up. I'm holding on the doorknob like this. Like, <laughs> no, you don't. They're tugging, tugging, tugging. <clears throat> I had three earrings at the time, long earrings. They finally get me, six guys, one on each arm, one on each leg. One sits on my back, one sits on my head, and then they restrain me. They cuff my hands and my legs and wrap my waist and everything. And finally, like, all right. And they take my shoes off, like, there, and they leave. I'm like, oh, no, you don't. So I'm like, arr, arr. I bite my way out of the restraints. And I undo this one, reach around, I slip through the other one, I get on the door, I'm like, bang, 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 you can't keep me in here, you don't know, blah, 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 I'm gonna get out of this place, you can't, nothing's gonna hold me. Go tend to the whatever. <laughs> You're from the Marines again, right? Get on the bed, I'm like, nah. Once again, we have the same fight. I'm trying to get out of the room, that's not working. They're blocking the door, whatever. I'm holding on to the doorknob, they got me vertical. <clears throat> get me on the bed, arm, arm, leg, leg. Sit on my back, sit on my head, rips out all my earrings. So you can probably tell, see the, the lines right there? You got the tears. Yeah, that's because that got ripped out four different times. Yikes. Once in a fight and then three, three more on that one because he was sitting on my head and started pulling my earrings yep. out. It was unpleasant. Then they strap me in, they leave. Ha uh, see, listen to us. I'm like, no, I don't. Once again, <laughs> I'm not making this up. I, bite, I like the chew. <laughs> I bite the restraint take off the other restraint, take off my feet, and I'm like, I don't feel like fighting him again. I don't think I'm gonna win this one. So I just lay down and I pass out. 24 hours later, I'd probably not 24, probably like, I don't know, 15 hours later, right? They finally come in, this doctor walks in, he goes, I'm your doctor, blah, blah, blah. And I once again had some choice, four letter words for him and turned back over. He's like, John, we know you're doing drugs. We know you're huffing free on that air conditioner units. You know, like, <laughs> we know what you're doing, whatever. And I was like, I don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Untrue. Everybody knew better, right? right. I mean, you can look at me like, that dude's a drug addict. So, <clears throat> more time passes. They leave. They come back hours later. I'm like, okay. And I was like, I really have to pee. And they go, you going to fight us again? I'm like, no. So I go to the bathroom. Like, are you hungry? I'm like, yeah. They give me some food. I'm like, all right, you ready to be in general population? I'm like, I guess. So then they're like, all right, you gotta do a strip search. I'm like, this is humiliating. Then they're like, we gotta do, we gotta de-louse you. I'm like, I don't have lice. They're like, we're gonna make sure you don't. Yeah. So that happens. Then I'm thinking, this is gonna be like all the movies I've seen. Like, I don't know, uh, Clockwork Orange and whatever, you know, like The Matrix <laughs> and 12 Monkeys, all this stuff. And I'm, I'm all like prepared to come out and to fight people to the death or whatever, like uh, Thunderdome or something. And here's what I see. Bust open the door, I'm all like, huh. And there's my brother. You know what he did? Same thing? No, nah, he took off his shoes. Oh, smart. I said, take off your shoes. He goes, okay. <laughs> Let me show you where your room's at. That's your room. He's been over there playing pool, playing foosball, watching Making TV, <laughs> yeah. hitting on girls. In the meantime, everybody's like, yeah, we heard you screaming last night. That was quite a commotion. I'm like, everybody doesn't do that? I'm like, nah, man, <laughs> just you. So, so learn by example type thing. No, I don't. I learned everything the hard way. So any lesson I teach you and you're like, man, everybody probably knows. You probably read that in a book or somewhere. Nope. Mm-mm. Not John. I learned that the hardest way possible. Him's so. a caveman. <laughs> so, so when I tell you something, be assured, I know why you don't do it that way. All right, we're going to do something. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, hey there. <laughs> so um, we're painting up on the scaffolding. And I think it's a well-documented fact that I'm lazy. Jimmy, will you agree with that? Oh, surely. Yeah, he yeah. says yes. So... <clears throat> Here's a, a perfect example of how I'm lazy, all right? You see we've got two scaffolds up here, and so I'm painting everything I can up high, and I get down to the midsection, I paint all that, and I get down low and I paint that. And I do the same thing over here, right? So when we were over on this side, 
they were farther apart. And so I had to like lean out and I got on this side and leaned out. <laughs> but when we got over here, the staircase kind of pushes them a little bit closer together. And I'm, <laughs> I'm up on this one and Jimmy goes, don't you do it. <laughs> don't you do it. And I'm like, I think I can make it. He goes, John, seriously, I don't want to have to take you to the hospital and explain this to your family. I'm like, they won't care. Nobody cares if I die. And he's like, seriously, don't. So as I'm in the habit of doing, I'm like, you said what? Learn the lesson the hard way. So, <laughs> so I jump over one way. I'm doing my thing. And I'm like, see, I did it. And I get cocky. And then what does Jimmy say? Don't do it. <laughs> and then what do I do? I think I got this. I think I got this. So the first time, because he was so cautious, I'm like giving it a good jump, right? But the second time, I'm like, I've already done this before. Like, how hard could it be? So I jump. And I under-anticipate my jump. And like my one toe on my right foot like right here catches and then right here is off and so i land i'm like no no <laughs> and i was seriously i look down at jimmy and he's like oh i saw that and i'm like <laughs> yeah. yeah so that just happened all right so i got a confession to make and it's hard for you to see in this and i try not to talk about it because i'm very self-conscious i think you know how self-conscious i am you know how a lot of people some people have um where their face rests in a in an ugly face, yep. right? Some of them, they like, oh, you, when you relax your face, it just goes into a natural smile and like, you're pleasant. I'm not, it takes a lot of effort to look even mildly pleasant. So normally, and I hate to do this, but I'm gonna just show you, I'm gonna relax my face and let you see what it looks like normally. <laughs> so this, this is how I normally look. And then I have to like really think about it, like, okay, look normal and I'm like, it's a like massive But it effort. takes so much effort to make my face look like this. Like, you guys need to appreciate how much effort I put forth to making myself more presentable to you. I realize I don't shower properly or brush my teeth or wipe like other people, but at least I do this to my face. So, you're welcome. We're going to get back to me. <laughs> oh, hi there. Now, do I have... I haven't really looked at myself in a mirror ever, apparently. But do I have... That's why my mirrors aren't broken. Do I have like a raccoon face? No. Are you telling me the truth? No. All right, so we've been painting like crazy for 28 minutes. <laughs> um, we did all the big area, um, high and low, uh, kitchen, dining room, living room, all the master, the uh, bathroom, the throne room, the closet, master bath, and upstairs. And we got everything two coated except for the upstairs and then we got to do the garage still. So we got to go get some more paint. We're going to do our part to end world hunger. We're going to eat some lunch. And also there's a new internet challenge going around and these things are just ridiculous, but I'm not going to do that one. But I do have one for you. Try to go an entire day without complaining about anything. Even if it really bugs you, just go an entire day without complaining and just feel like, hmm. Then, once you're done with that day, just like Forrest Gump when he got to the end of the driveway, just keep running. <laughs> just keep not complaining, right? And then you just keep on doing that until you get to the other coast and you're like, this isn't so bad. And then run back to the other coast. Do this till your life ends. You'll find you're a lot happier. All right, we're gonna go watch. Oh, so um, if you're anything like me, people constantly cease to amaze me, all right? Let me elaborate here. Break is served. Fast. <laughs> what do you think? You think maybe these two pieces should have gone together where it says breakfast is served? Or yeah, it'd be a good distance away to notice that distance. Or is break is served and then fast. I just don't know which it is. <laughs> also, it's a little off kilter. This is like the perfect example of not my job. <laughs> I don't want to do it anyway. <laughs> like, well, okay. make, this is probably why you don't make fifteen dollars an hour. It's probably why you can't pay your rent. I mean, I'm sorry, but they've got an application on the door. Over there. <laughs> so, Please apply. Someone. This is the world that we live in. We're trying to go home, but I'll explain what we did. So um, we painted everything in the house twice. 28 minutes later, here we are. Uh, we're not cleaned up yet because we can't sweep this because everything's still wet. So let's stick to the walls. We don't want that. We're better than that. That's right. 
Now, if we were to do that, first of all, that would be stupid, but it would look like we're busy, but it wouldn't be making progress. It would be making the opposite of progress, which I think is called Congress, if I'm <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. So that brings up a very important point. Motion does not constitute progress. Allow me to elaborate. A lot of people look busy all the time, right? And they're doing stuff and they're just constantly like anxious and late and, you know, like going, 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 going. And they're not getting anything done. Like riding on a stationary bike. A lot of, yeah, a lot of people talk all day long, but they don't actually say anything. Mm -hmm. Like your lips are moving, words are coming out, nothing worth mentioning. <laughs> Nothing personal. I just don't feel edified after this conversation. And I feel like it was a waste of my time. True, very more. <laughs> and, you know, the same thing could be true with, I'm busy, 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 busy. You're like, that's cute. <laughs> but you're not actually doing anything. In fact, a lot of times, you're making it worse. You're making more work the busier that you are. Maybe everybody is like, hey, buddy. Stop. Stop talking, stop moving. You're at about eight, we need you at about five. Maybe less. Maybe less. Bring about right. down to two. Go on vacation. Take a break. <laughs> yeah. Recoil. Everybody else can pick up your slack that you've been, you know, whatever. I know everybody's like, but I'm not like that. I know some people like that, but I'm not like that. I'm like, right. are you sure? Does everybody that you talk to, even total strangers, comment on how productive you are? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a reason for that. Does everybody you meet be like, you know what? I'm really edified by our conversation. I really feel like a better person now that I've talked to you. Thank you so much. Like our five minutes or five hours or five days, whatever it was together, I feel like a better person. Do they say that every single time? It seems like no time. If no, maybe you're not as good as you think. I still love you, but you got room to work. You got some room to do something and not just motion. Oh, hey there. So. I just want to say to all of you, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you had a wonderful Valentine's Day like me. I don't want to brag, but I got 100 times as many Valentines this year as I did last year. It might be because of COVID. It might be because of the shows getting picked up and aired. It might be just because I'm a popular guy. But last year, Jimmy, I got zero Valentines. And then this year, I got a hundred times that many. So a hundred times zero is still zero. zero. In fact, <laughs> even the telemarketer is like, we don't want to give them the wrong idea. We're not going to call about his car's extended warranty right now. So that's embarrassing. All right. So today, we've been wiring all day and cleaning windows. Show them the windows you clean, Jimmy. Oh, look how pretty. Isn't that beautiful? Just, oh, and then look at nice. the difference look, between these. are like, oh, oh those are no, no, Kind of scabby. Yeah. No. But we've got some lights on. We've got electricity. I mean, I love it. Yes, you do. Now, what am I going to talk to you guys about today? Jimmy, got any ideas? Oh, I don't know. Maybe honoring your mother and father. That's a good one. That's the fourth commandment. Am I right? Is that the fourth? Uh, I'm not sure the number, but I, I it's pretty it probably, I think yeah. it probably is. So it says that before it says do not murder. Have that's you thought about good, that? That's a good thought. Yeah, it says don't take the name of your Lord in vain. Have no other gods before you. Do not covet thy neighbor's oxen. <laughs> no, hold on. Let me think. What's the third one? Honor the, uh, keep the Sabbath holy. Yep, keep the Sabbath holy. That's it. And then, honor, honor your, your father, father and father. Yep. And then, do not murder. That's good. So, idea. that's kind of important. Now, it doesn't say, honor your father and your mother if they were good parents. That's true. It doesn't say, honor your father and your mother if you like them and agree with them. Mm -hmm. It says, honor your father and your mother. And, what will happen? You will live a long life. So I don't want to live a long life. Therefore, I <laughs> do not honor my father and my mother at all. You're so bad. <laughs> I mean, I just like, oh, mom, are you talking again? Gosh. She, she watches these. She knows that that's not true. I call my mom all the time. I love my mom. And my dad, I'm sure you guys realize, is um, in hospice right now still. I went and saw him yesterday. And he has just such a wonderful spirit. Um, I... I'm honored to have him as a father. He has been, um, you know, n not what other people would consider a great father. But to me, like, he left me 
musical abilities and spirituality and things that I think matter a lot. And he uh, doesn't complain. He is in absolute agony. And I've never heard him say a peep about how much it hurts at all, which I think is amazing. Now, I, I do want to point out one little thing, okay? Sometimes miracles are like, hey, I prayed for you and I laid hands on you, and then there's the answer. And sometimes miracles are like, you know, I've had this thing for a very long time. I haven't told anybody about it. I haven't even really prayed about it. But I've noticed it. It's been one of those things that's like, I should probably deal with that. It's just something that hurts or whatever, right? So I had a thing. Um, I haven't bothered, but I'm sure you probably go back and look at old pictures. I had like a thing right here. It was like a age spot, liver spot, whatever you call it. And it had been there for a while. And several people that knew better were like, you probably ought to have that looked at. That might be skin cancer. And I had another one coming up here too. Oh, I had a mole up here. And I saw it was like getting darker and getting bigger. And I'm like, I should deal with that. But I was too busy because I was working too much. That's what John does. That's what I do. Now, I wasn't given a lot of thought. It was just something I was aware of. And I'm kind of like, hmm, yeah, that's not great. I went down to Mexico end of last year. And um, I didn't tell you guys, I think, why I was going down to Mexico. But I went down there because my dad was down there. And I hadn't seen him in a decade. But I felt that it was very important to go and see him. And so I went down there and I visited with him and with my sister. And um, then I came back home. And I hadn't looked before I went. But I came back and it was gone. The mole was gone and this age spot thing was gone completely. Wow. Now, am I saying if you go visit your dad when he's sick that you're going to be healed? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that that was just an interesting thing to me that like, wow, I think God looked at that and went, you drove 3,000 miles to see your dad and to help him out and, you know, pay for some of the things that they couldn't afford. And I honor that. And I'm going to spare what would have been something worse on you. Maybe that's true with you guys too. I don't know. But it is important that, because like, I see all these people like, yeah, but you don't understand what my parents did. Think about this. A lot of the people that are saying that are parents or grandparents now. And you're still blaming your parents for why your life sucks. Right. And I'm like, they were growing up too. <laughs> they were just trying to figure I still haven't figured it out. My kids are, well, my daughter's married. I'm like, I'm still like, I don't know, man. I think the way to raise a kid is I have no idea. I'm lost, right? But for us to go hate on our parents because they didn't buy us a pony or whatever in the world we think they should have done. I never did get a pony. It's probably, it's probably me neither. It's probably <laughs> time to let that one go. Forgive them. And don't, don't just forgive them. Tell them, like, I love you. I'm proud of you. What can I do to help you? And, and just let them know. Because I think that's important. By the way, happy Valentine's. I hope you guys got more than my hundred times Valentine's, even plus one. That's all you really need is just one person to love you. So I'm hoping that one day one person might love me.